It's not about the value of your soul. It's about the value of you in the marketplace. There's always two pains in life. There's the pain of discipline or there's the pain of regret. It's not what happens that determines the quality or the quantity of your life. It's not what happens. And the reason is because what happens happens to about everybody. No different. The sun went down on all of us last night. A common event, a happening. And I found out that the same things can happen to two different people. One gets rich and one stays poor. Why is that? It's because it's not what happens, but rather it's what you do that changes everything. What's an area of your life right now that you really want to improve? What's an area that's important to improve? If your body's great, how about your career? If career's great, how about your relationships? Intimate one especially, or your kids, or your relationship with your creator, your spiritual side of your life, or is it your finances? Figure an area that really matters, decide on that area. I say to people, you've got to participate in your own rescue. You've got to retool yourself. Lasting change is different than a goal. You don't always get your goals, but you always get your standards. Everybody in life gets their musts. They don't get their shoulds. Most people have a list of shoulds, don't they? Don't you have a list of the shoulds, things you should do, you should follow through on, I, I should lose some weight, I should work out more, I should make more calls, I should respond more rapidly to my email, whatever, you know? I should get into the office earlier, I should be you know, more confident, whatever your should list is. People love to have their should list make, be met, but it's kind of like New Year's resolutions. If it does, it's really exciting, but if it doesn't, which is most of the time, eh, it's a little disappointing, but you kind of know it's not gonna happen. But when you decide something is a must for you, an absolute must, when you cut off any possible, you say, I'm gonna find the way or I'm gonna make the way. Human beings, when they resolve things, when they make a real resolution inside themselves, which is they raise the standard and they make it a must, they find the way. Everything in life is always changing. We don't have to work on change. Change is automatic, but progress is not. So if you wanna make real progress, then you really gotta look at your life in a different way. You gotta say, I gotta take control of this process and not just hope it's gonna work out like people do who make a resolution. My mom was a powerful woman, so she kicked my fourth father out, whose name I carry, and he adopted me. And when he went out, she decided it wasn't his side, so she kicked me out too by chasing me out with a knife. And I wasn't worried she was gonna stab me or anything, but I decided this is freedom. And I've gotta find a way to make my life work. But I had no money, I had a 1960 Volkswagen I worked $40 a week as a janitor to buy and pay for. And so I had no car, I had no money, I had no anything. I went and slept in a person's uh, laundry room and then I decided I've got to figure out what to do and I needed to feed my mind because I was so depressed, I was so overwhelmed, I'm missing my brother and sister and feeling just completely out of sorts. So I, I got on a bus and I traveled 14 miles, I remember because I ended up running it one time, uh, and I went to this bookstore and I bought this book called The Magic of Believing by Claudia Bristol. It's the first real book other than maybe Think and Grow Rich or Emerson's essays. And I started on this journey of saying, every single day, I'm going to feed my mind. I'm not going to hope good thoughts show up. I'm going to read biographies. I'm going to, I'm going to find out what makes people tick. I'm going to understand what makes me tick. And I, I wanted to read a book a day, but I didn't do that. I took a speed reading class, and I read 700 books over seven years. And they were all personal development, human development, psychology, physiology. And then what I tried to do is take anything that I learned and apply it. And then when I applied it, you know, I was 5'1 in my sophomore year in high school. I'm six seven now. I tell people the difference is personal growth. Really. <laughs> but sincerely, I, 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 I became Mr. Solution because I wanted to help everybody. So I was this little fat guy, and I couldn't lose weight, and I lost weight. And all my buddies are like, how'd you do that? And I said, well, here's what I did. They lost weight, and then we all got girls. And, and <laughs> that led to, as a young kid, you know, that led to where, you know, if you had a problem, I was Mr. Solution, especially if you're a girl, I was more motivated to help you. So the breakthrough was really understanding the power of compressing decades into days. And if someone has spent decades of their life, and they compress it into a book, and you can read it in an hour or a few days, you have such an advantage because when you learn by your own experience, it's painful and it's slow. When you learn by other people's experience, everybody knows in the financial world, other people's money is leverage, right? Well, other people's experience is more powerful than other people's money because you can have the money and lose it. But if you get the experience, you can change it all. So I think that was the beginning for me and it set me on a lifelong path of hunger. You know, I've never lost my hunger. You know, you get on an airplane, what's the first thing they say? If we get into trouble, mask will come down, oxygen's there, and the first thing you gotta do is put it on your kid, right? No, why? They, who do they tell you to put it on? Yourself, you selfish bastard. What's the deal here, right? 
but it's because if we don't take care of ourselves, we can't take care of them. So for leaders, what I always tell them is, it's you first. It starts with you, and it starts with your psychology. 80% of growing a business, if you look at what the chokehold is on a business, it's always the leader. And 80% of that chokehold is the psychology, and 20% is the mechanics. I mean, people in this room know the mechanics and strategies beyond what anybody on earth knows in their category. So it's really about you being in the state where you execute. It's like I always tell people, knowledge is not power, it's total BS. Knowledge is potential power. Execution trumps knowledge every day of the week. And so my life is, how do you get to yourself to execute? And execution comes from learning to put yourself in that right state every day. What do these people need to get started? Why aren't they starting? We all know the answer is fear. But the difference with you guys or me or anybody who's followed through is we're more afraid of the, what life would be like if we don't follow through than the person who's willing to settle for what they got and kind of hope it'll change and maybe purchase something for the moment and then not follow through with it. It's almost like people, overachievers, have a little more fear. They're a little more afraid of missing out. They're afraid of not being there or they got a strong enough reason to follow through. So I'd say if you're looking at home, you want to give somebody some value, go, where do I start? I'm sick of this. That's a damn good place. Once you break through, then it just becomes a game. The people that are getting your products have not yet broken through in most cases. The breakthrough happens by conditioning your mind every day, by feeding it a role model, a story. It's putting yourself in a peak state where you fall through by getting physically strong. It's creating a little ritual of doing a little...